I'm wondering <laughs> today who of those of you who are watching struggle with perfectionism. I have a confession to make. I am, I'd like to say, a recovering perfectionist. But my confession is that I'm clearly not uh, in recovery because, oh, that perfectionism keeps rearing its ugly head in different places in my life. And so today I'm going to talk about perfectionism and how, <laughs> if you struggle like I do, how you might be able to try on a different perspective and get a little bit more insights into perfectionism. So last week, I was doing my Thoughtfully Fit Thursday video, as I do every week. Um, but I was, I was excited because I actually launched my corporate curriculum for Thoughtfully Fit. And so I was doing my very first workshop uh, that morning, last Thursday morning, in a company from nine to noon. It's a four-part series where there's homework and accountability in between. I was really excited. And then I had to be at the National Speakers Association uh, after that for the afternoon for a workshop session. And so in the morning I asked my contact at the company if I could use their conference room to do my Facebook Live video. And she said, yeah, of course. Well. The workshop ended and I got everything set up and the light and the microphone and the sound and all of that and I started my video and I was on their, their Wi-Fi at the, at the company and about five or six minutes in, I get the like spiral of death saying that your internet connection is stopped. Please wait for the video to continue. And I thought, oh shoot, 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 shoot. People are watching and this isn't professional and the time went on and I kept sort of willing it <laughs> to come back and the time kept going and now it's four minutes, six minutes, eight minutes, 12 minutes and I'm losing track of where I just was and what my story was and what my point was and my perfectionism just like bam, it was right there. So I was not practicing strengthening my thoughtfully fit core which for those of you who have been watching my videos know what's your core you pause you think and then you act so in that moment there was no pause and taking a breath and just you know reviewing my notes and thinking about what I wanted to share and you know come acting in a calm grounded way there was a spiral. I was, I was like, daggone it, now I'm gonna be late. And you know, you always create a buffer and you didn't create a buffer. And literally, Little Miss Perfect Pants, that's who I have loving, lo lovingly named her because I've gotten to know her well as I've done work with coaches over the years and self-awareness and therapy. She was taken over and she had a good grip on me. I can't believe you didn't think of this ahead of time and test the Wi-Fi. Yeah, now you're gonna have to stop the video and there's gonna be two parts. Oh, that's gonna be great for people who are watching. They're never gonna click on the second part. And now you're gonna be late for NSA. Great. She was just relentless. And what's interesting is perfectionism, Brene Brown, who I love, talks about perfectionism and that it's different than striving for excellence. Striving for excellence is internal. Like, I want to do good. I want to have an impact. Perfectionism crosses over the line into shame. And what will people think? And Brene says that whenever perfectionism is driving, shame is always in shotgun. And so for me, in that moment, the shame was, come, was creeping in. Well, who are you anyway to be doing these weekly videos? When my social media team a year ago said, you gotta start getting on Facebook Live. No, I'm not gonna do I do workshops and keynotes, and I, I work hours, dozens, hundreds of hours on them. And I create beautiful PowerPoint slides. And they said, yeah, no, you don't need to do that. Just just hit record and share your wisdom. People want to hear 
what you've learned, your client's stories, your successes, your failures, your research. You've been studying this for so long. Well, you guys, my perfectionism and the fear, right? And she says, if, if shame is shotgun, perfectionism driving, shame is shotgun, fear's in the back seat. My fear of what will people think, and I'm not good enough, and Little Miss Perfect Pants prevented me for months and months and months from stepping in and doing these videos. And so last week, after I went to the NSA and I got home, I emailed uh, Kathy on my social media team and I said, I think we need to delete this week's Thoughtfully Fit videos. It, it, I had technical errors and I had to stop it and turn off the Wi-Fi and go by data and start a new second recording and I couldn't remember where I was and it was clunky and I think we just need to delete it. And she gave me the most thoughtful reply. She said, Darcy, yes, of course. We can delete it if that's what you want, no problem. But what about not? <laughs> what about just owning it? That it wasn't perfect. And that there's still value in the message that you gave even though it wasn't perfect. And what about showing them your humanity? and letting them see who you are and that indeed you're not perfect. Not only am I not perfect, I'm, <laughs> I have fear about not being perfect. It's this, it's this cycle. And I, I, I thanked her for that and I said, you, you know, you're exactly right. I need to just let that imperfect two-part disjointed video series stay. <laughs> yeah, you can go back and watch it. <sighs> And I also then realized I needed to let go of that, like, that shame that I was having around, you know, I, I teach this stuff, how to pause, how to, how to only pause in the moment, which I did not do well, but also how to create a pause in your life. So creating buffers, which I did not do well. I went from having my corporate workshop to doing my Facebook Live to needing to be at the NSA with no buffer. I know better than that. So there was also this shame of being, of being seen for my imperfection, like, oh, you teach this stuff, but you clearly aren't doing it. And I'm realizing like, it's a journey. <laughs> it's a process. Just like if you wanna be physically fit, you can't wake up tomorrow, whatever your definition is. You can't go hit a home run if you haven't been at the batting cages and working with a coach and trying to perfect that swing. It's a journey, it's a process, and, and, and you don't, you're never done. Which is the great news. You can always keep working and keep improving. So, after I got that feedback from Kathy, I took a long pause this week and thought about, gosh, what is it that I need in my life? What is it that I'm afraid of? What am I ashamed of? And I realized with the new awareness, right, when you pause and think and you ask yourself powerful and thoughtful questions, you have access to different new actions. I realized that I just need to own this that I need to share it today. That's my act. That it is a journey. It is a process. And I think because I am working on trying to be thoughtful in my own life and thoughtful in interactions with others, I'm regularly trying to pause and think about what's needed and what did I do well and what did I do wrong and what are the obstacles and what's my fear so that I can act differently. Shame and perfectionism is all about what will they think. It's very different than striving for excellence. That took me a long time to figure out because my high focus on high quality and wanting to really have excellence in all I do is indeed a strength. I'm driven, I want to learn, I want to do better.
But as soon as that strength goes and crosses that line and becomes extreme and goes to the place of, what will they think? That's when perfectionism rears its ugly head. And the cool thing is, like you, I'm, I'm taking a mindfulness-based uh, course right now. It's actually called Mindfulness-Based Eating Awareness Training. And it's a 12-week, three-month course. And it talks about, you know, you don't have to have judgment for your actions, you just notice. Just get mindful and tuned in and notice. That is the pause. So when Little Miss Perfect Pants rears her head, I now have, having, having worked with coaches about saboteurs and gremlins, most of the time I can notice she's there. Last Thursday, that shame, that perfectionism was driving. Oh my God, people are watching. What are they going to be thinking? You didn't plan ahead and test the Wi-Fi. That what will people think was driving. That was not a healthy place. For the most part, I can recognize when Little Miss Perfect Pants jumps in and wants to take over. And what I realize is that she wants what's best for me. She doesn't want me to look foolish or to fail. And I can typically, when I recognize that, share, <laughs> calm her down, talk her off the ledge and say, you know what? It doesn't matter if it's perfect. It doesn't matter what people think. I'm doing these videos because I have found my passion and my calling and I think there is some value in sharing that with others. And if there's not, that's okay. So if the video stopped and it was disjointed, that's okay because I'm not doing this to be perfect and to sort of, you know, make sure that everybody has a perfect life. I'm doing this because I love doing it because I've found my passion and I want to share that with the world. And I want to help other people have the courage to look within, to find their passion and to share it with the world. I want to encourage you if you're at a place in your life where perfectionism is getting in the way of you jumping, playing big, being bold, because you're worried, what will other people think? I want to invite you to pause, to think for yourself. What's important about this for me? What do I really want? What is possible if I allow myself to really honor what I want and what's possible if I let go of the fear of what will other people think. I'll tell you what, if you are like any of my hundreds of clients I've worked with, what's possible is amazing. It's big. It's profound. It's bold. When you can let go of that perfectionism of what other people think and you can jump in, it is so, mm, what's the word? Ah, oh, fulfilling, invigorating. Last night we had our small group coaching for women, our third session. So it's a, there's eight sessions over four months. These women were Oh my gosh, we, we, we went over. We didn't even end on time because these women were saying, you know what, I'm going to be bold. I'm going to send that letter of resignation to my boss. I'm telling my last day is in February. I'm going to get out of this relationship of 17 years with this guy who has been all versions of abusive to me. I'm going to be bold. I'm going to let go of what will people think if I walk away from this person who externally has this image and we have this image together. The, the, the level of commitment and boldness to what these women wanted, not what society wanted, was so awesome. And they've got accountability groups next Wednesday to, to, to report back. Because as soon as you can be bold in your life and you, have, you pause and think and you have that new awareness, if you can then create some support and accountability for whatever action you need to take, you're gonna find more joy and greater inner peace and more happiness. So for those of you who uh, have your own Little Miss Perfect Pants, or maybe you call 
him or her something else, put a note. I'd love to hear if there's other versions that you have that you can relate to this. I'm going to challenge you this week to let go. Let go of that need to be perfect. I'm going to challenge myself to let go because <laughs> clearly I got sort of caught up last week in that, you know, uh, that need to, to be perfect. And to instead tap into your heart. What do you want? What do you love? What do you know you need to do? And let me know how it goes. And for those of you who are interested in having more support, I have my next small group coaching for women starting in January. So uh, there's a, I'll put a link below in case you want to sign up, you want to check it out, hear more what it's like, or maybe you want to work with one of the coaches on my team to get some one-on-one -on -one help to help you uncover like, when is my saboteur? What is that inner chatter, that gremlin? And how can I work through that obstacle to get to a place of greater joy? So if you're interested in that, you can always do a free sample session with any of the coaches on my team. I have six phenomenal certified professional coaches. I'll put a link so that you can read about them and their bios. You can talk with my coaching coordinator and learn a little bit more about the process and the structure and what it's like and if that might be something that supports you. Or you can just keep joining me every Thursday on Thoughtfully Fit Live. Also, my um, newsletter just, I think, went out yesterday and it's talking about Thoughtfully Fit managers that they don't solve problems. That was the topic of my Im beautifully imperfect uh, video last week. So if you didn't get my uh, newsletter, be sure to sign up. I send it out once a month and it's just hopefully filled with tips on how to be thoughtfully fit in your life. I always have a book recommendation. If you are wanting to go deeper to learn more about the topic, I've got case studies, um, upcoming events. So I uh, would love, and I usually also have a coach's corner. So I've got words of wisdom around the topic of the month from one of the coaches on my teams. So thanks so much for joining me. Have a great work, uh, weekend, everybody. We'll see you next Thursday.